Boris Johnson, he's due to announce the government's battle plan to deal with the coronavirus. That's going to happen later today. Could see the NHS ask for help from volunteers alongside powers to ban public gatherings and create so-called no-go zones in areas affected by the virus. It comes as British Airways and Ryanair both cancelled hundreds of flights yesterday as demand for travel actually drops. But before we talk to Simon Calder, we're going to catch up with Steve and Suzanne and Susan McCarty in Tenerife. They, of course, are two of the Brits still quarantined in their hotel, tested last night for the coronavirus, hoping to fly home today. Um, we talked to you last week and, you know, I really hope that you'd be home by now. How are you doing? We're good. You're we're good okay. as, well, as well as we can be. Uh, a bit up and down emotionally over the weekend, but we're, hopefully today we get out. So oh, I hope we'll so. What a nightmare it's been, though. And I guess what must be frustrating is the kind of... You're getting some conflicting advice and it's not clear the, the problem we've had is the foreign office um the, the emails that we get every day are just are so wrong and uh, misleading uh, and we're getting no guidance from them at all the the spanish authorities seem to know what they're doing uh, and english ones don't so that's very very disappointing actually because that's what they are there for you know they're there to help people like you who, who who basically need help now look you're stuck there it was only supposed to be a few days holiday wasn't it and you've been stuck there for quite some time now how are things back home Are you in touch with the family jobs going to be all right when you go back i hope so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've been keeping in touch with everyone like back home letting them know what's happening day by day but um, and friends and family have been great. Um, they're looking after our dogs for us and everyone's just helping, sure. even to drop stuff off at the hotel, but we're not allowed anything in because we only came for four days, but now we've been here, I don't know how long. A lot longer. <laughs> a lot longer, an awful lot longer. And it is, you know, it's really difficult. And I know you two are very stoic and it's admirable, um, but there's other people who are in the hotel who are really having a tough time, aren't they? Yeah, and there's a lot of people worse off. Um, there's a poor, there's a couple. She's seven months pregnant, oh, um, and they're hoping to get back home. Um, there's also another man. He's uh, got leukemia. He's um, finding it difficult to get medications. So there's people a lot worse off than us. Um, we're, we're just a waiting game, but we hope everyone can, can get home um, and just get clear cl clarification. And um, that's all people want. Of course, you want to know what's happening. So you hopefully will get the test results. Hopefully, yeah. you'll be all clear. And mm. fingers crossed, might even be on a flight this afternoon or this evening. Yeah, hopefully. Might be. Yeah. Might be. Might yeah. be. Okay. Because you've kind of you've kind of walked this way before and almost got home, and then you have to go back. So we're due, we were due to fly yesterday. We got told uh, over the weekend to book immediately a flight, which we did. Uh, and then uh, yesterday we got told you're not going anywhere, so we've lost that flight. So hopefully oh, today. Okay, I hope you get a refund on that. That's really bad if you've been given the wrong advice. So we did from the foreign office that had in the email to book within 24 hours of the first test, which we had on Saturday. So we did that, but then it was only Jet Two passengers that were allowed to leave yesterday. So we didn't. We weren't oh, for allowed to. Goodness go. sake! That is. I just know. That is that, that is crazy. It's just not on. It really it really isn't. Listen, I really hope you get home. Thank you I so really much. do, and yeah. thank you for talking to us. Uh, yeah, it's been a it, it's been a holiday you won't forget. That's for sure. Yeah, no. thank you both very yeah. much. Thank you. Absolute thank you. nightmare. Thanks for coming as well. Oh, thank you, love. Now we've been running a poll this morning, um, asking whether the coronavirus is making you worry about your holiday plans. Over half of you are saying, yes, you are concerned. Well, travel expert Simon Calder is right here. So, Simon, British Airways, Ryanair cancelling flights all over the place. Uh, they certainly have, yep. Hundreds of flights. British Airways, 432 flights they cancelled wow. yesterday for the rest of um, March. Um, Ryanair has said this morning that um, it's cancelling about a quarter of its uh, uh, flights to and from Italy and it expects its planes to be much emptier over this month and next as a result of this. The whole travel industry having an absolutely miserable time, mm. but my goodness me, not as miserable as those poor people oh, in the hotel. Just, really um, just so stressful, so yeah. anxious. And that is particularly for those people in the, stuck in the hotel, but also I've never 
have felt so much stress, so much concern from people who are booked to travel. Normally, yes. you're looking forward to your holiday, anticipating a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. That's just turned into apprehension for so many yeah. people. So people are worried about travelling anyway, especially yes. if they're travelling somewhere that, that's a hot spot, they're maybe worried about that. But just generally travelling around, you know, there's the uncertainty, isn't it? It's it is uncertainty. uncertainty and I'm doing everything I can to say, look, if the government says it's all right to go to a destination, and bear in mind there's only a few places that you can't. Mainland China, a couple of regions of South Korea I've never heard of, and these 11 towns in, in Italy where mm. uh, nobody I know has ever been to any of them. Everywhere else, the risk are not, it's not, you can't say it's safe because nowhere is, but the risks are tolerably low. Sure. So you have to assume that if you're booked to go there, your trip will be going ahead and you will be safe. But it's one thing to say that and to say, by the way, looking at all the risks, um, British travellers have never been safer. Um, and actually getting people to feel that. Well, as you can imagine, loads of questions. So mm. I just romp through as many as we can, Simon. Carolyn says, we're flying to Florida in May with our two young girls, oh, about lovely. to pay the balance of over yeah. £5,000, which is a lot of money. Yeah. Worried about losing the money if the flight is cancelled due to the virus. What can you suggest? If the flight is cancelled due to the virus, which I think is an extremely unlikely event, you'll get all your money back. Right. So th there's so many people at the moment being asked for their summer holidays to, be to pay the balance. And unless you pay it, then you will lose your deposit by definition. Right. Lots of people who are on low deposit deals are now finding they've cancelled and they're now being asked for more money not to go. So the only sensible advice, honestly, is to pay the balance. Mm. You can have a word with your travel agent and say, give, give us a week or two. They may do that. Right. But otherwise, pay the balance. If the holiday, for some reason, doesn't go ahead, then it's very straightforward. You get a refund. You, you get the refund, so you're yeah. OK, and, and you should be fine going on holiday. What about this one from Rowan? He says, I'm going to Urbino. Yeah, Urbino in Italy on the 30th of March, which is very soon. Fantastic, yes. Is it safe for me to go? Well, no, I can't say it's safe. Nobody can. But are the risks tolerably low? Of course they are. And if they're not by the 30th of March, then the government will say so, at which point you can start to recoup the money either from your, uh, from, from your holiday company right. or from um, uh, your airline if you booked independently. You might get some money from travel insurance, but generally travel insurance isn't some kind of magic umbrella that covers you for if you want to change your mind and not go. So right. bear that in mind. For sure. Uh, Rob says, me and my family are due to fly to Thailand in three weeks' time. Oh, lovely. Obviously a little bit concerned. Are we actually safe to fly and carry on? Would we be quarantined on our return? I think it's extremely unlikely. I've just been speaking to my lovely friends Deborah and Terry on the beach in, in Kowlak. They're having a wonderful time. Right. Uh, no problem there at all. It's really important when you're going through international airports, whether that's Heathrow, Manchester, Gatwick, Bangkok, wherever, to keep your distance from people to the extent that you possibly can and keep yeah. washing your hands, sure. especially that security queue. That is where everybody from right across the planet brings their own personal germs into some massive biohazard festival. Um, Sharon here. Sharon says we're going to Mallorca in April. Do you think we're going to be all right going to Mallorca? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, look, it's, it's say, April. It's, people, are, people are scared. I, you know, people I, oh, are I know, I know yeah, and I do, really do sympathise. But, but if it's April, then you know, lots is going to happen by then. Mm. If for some reason the government doesn't consider it safe, then you get your money back for your holiday. Right. So not so, to worry. Yes, not exactly. to worry, not to fear. And if you, yes. Do you think this is going to have a profound effect on the travel industry generally? Because I'm just wondering, especially for business trips, maybe some yeah. business people, men and women, will find that actually they can do it all online. Exactly. They can do it on Skype. They That's, don't actually tra need to travel. It's quite interesting, isn't that it? That is a real, real concern yeah. of the airlines because lots of companies, um, and they are, they're normally the ones who bankroll the whole business. Mm. You know, they fill up the business uh, cabins, which means that you and me can sit at the back and, <laughs> and pay uh, not very much for our flights. Um, but yes, you, know, you get used to the idea you're not allowed to travel. We've got to do it all on, on, on uh, teleconferencing mm. or whatever. Interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, do you think more people will be staying at home then for the holidays, going to the Outer Hebrides and Orkney and all these amazing places? And... Scotland's going to get a real surge of people going from uh, yeah. England, I think, because yeah. they're not going anywhere else. But overall, if the UK st starts losing, we're already losing the uh, many, many Chinese visitors who'd normally be here Indeed. at quite an off peak time. Um, if, the, for instance, the Americans stop coming, then it's going to be very tricky. Mm -hmm. And already, talking to individual travel industry people, they say Italians simply aren't coming to the UK at the moment. They're wow. staying home. And that means that hotels, restaurants, 
Tourist affects us all. They're, they're us losing, all. It really losing does. money. Yeah. Ultimately, it affects us all. Yeah. Simon, voice of reason. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.